And I'm delighted to say that Mara Wilson joins me live from New York. Mara, it's so good to talk to you. It really is. And the book is fascinating. The book is called Where Am I Now? Um, and what Thank I you. was very interested about was on the one of the first pages, you talk about your, um, <laughs> your acting career as being... Um, I like to call you say I like to call it my sordid past as a child actor. Does it feel like that, or is that just you being that's just you being funny? Yeah, that's that's me being funny. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's very little that was sordid about it uh, on the outside. I mean, I I was in a lot of children's movies, so you know, not too much uh, scandal happening there. No, absolutely not. And it's interesting that you sort of say you almost kind of stumbled into it. It was it was kind of accidental fame, if you like. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know what it was to be famous, you know? I, I had no idea. I mean, like, I knew Robin Williams was famous, but that was because he was the genie in Aladdin. But where I grew up in Los Angeles, being a child actor, I mean, children in the UK play, you know, play football and rugby at a young age, and, uh, you know, children in Canada play ice hockey, and children in Los Angeles, they, they go on auditions. So it wasn't that big of a deal, and my parents never thought I would become famous, which is the only reason that they let me do it. But you are such a good instinctive and, and, and very... It's interesting with, with children, because sometimes they don't get it quite right, but you are an absolute natural. Well, thank you very much. I, I was a very sensitive kid, I think, and I was a very extroverted child, too. And, uh, and I think I had a good ear for dialogue, and I think that's really all you need, and to be considered cute enough. So that's, that's you know, that's all you need to, uh, to, to be a decent child actor, I think. Well, yeah, you've got to have the talent as well. Of course you do. I mean, you, you lost your mum. You, <laughs> you, you were very, very young when you, when you lost your mother, and she died just uh, not long mm -hmm. after Matilda was completed, that filming was completed on the movie, and you always thought that she, she hadn't seen it, but actually she had, thanks to Danny DeVito. Yes, he, he showed her an early cut of the movie. And I when I when I heard that, I was just heartwarmed because Matilda meant so much to me and to my family. She was, you know, this character that we loved. It was this book that we loved. My mother actually used to read it at my brother's school when they were, you know, nine or ten. Uh, she would read it out loud because she could do all the character voices. And Matilda was my first favorite character, you know, my first favorite book. So it was something that meant so much to her, and it, it always made me so sad that she couldn't get it, mm -hmm. couldn't get to see the finished result. But knowing that Danny had did that, it, it really did warm my heart because it, it, she was a part of it to the very end. Yeah, what a kind man. What a very, very kind man he is. He, he really is. And I do wonder, is, you know, yeah. read, reading your book and obviously, you know, writing about your mum, which must have been very difficult, you do wonder what would have happened to your career if she had you know, if she hadn't died, because she really was there for you all the time. Not in a, not in a sort of pushy, stagey mum way, just as a very supportive way. She was. She was a very supportive and very strict parent, and uh, but very loving. You know, I always felt very loved. After she died, I think that... Sometimes I think I should have stopped acting after she died, because... After that, I, I think that it, it would have been kind of like going out on a high note anyway, because that was when Matilda was happening. After that, I think I felt a little burned out on acting. I wasn't sure I wanted to do it anymore. And I had other interests, but at the same time, it felt like this one constant in my life. Like, as long as I was on a movie set, things would be okay, mm -hmm. because it had become my new normal. And my world had been turned upside down, so just to continue film acting, that was... That was a new normal for me, and that, you know, made me made me feel safe and secure, even if I was starting to find it a little tedious. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. You know, that's interesting you say that, because in the book you talk about the fact that not many people will ever admit this, but film acting actually isn't all that much fun. <laughs> it's, you know, it's it, the, the camaraderie on sets is very fun. I will say that. Uh, the people that you work with, that's really fun. But a lot of it is you have to sit and do the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, for, for you know, somebody who likes to be in control, like me, that's hard, you know? Uh, to, to be a good, t uh, like, TV or film actor, what you need to do is you need to be good at taking direction, you need to be good at being vulnerable in front of people, you need to never be embarrassed, uh, you need to be good at being in the moment, at being present, at being emotional, uh, at, at taking, you know, taking direction and not complaining about it, and not being a control freak or a perfectionist. And I have none of those qualities. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a, a terrible perfectionist. And I, you know, and I was always very critical of myself and especially the way that I looked. 
on film, and I found that other people were as well. So uh, it really, I suppose, I think it just wasn't quite for me. It is a difficult one, isn't it? Because it's always hard if you've been a hugely successful, as you were, massively successful child actor. Mm -hmm. To make that transition is very, very difficult. And you're, you're very honest and open in the book, and you talk about the fact that you didn't feel pretty enough. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that it's, it's you know, that is Hollywood for you. Hollywood, people, people love to talk about how immoral Hollywood is, but it's not. It's amoral. It's a numbers game. It's demographics, you know? It's, it's, uh... I, I went out on the same calls as Kristen Stewart, even though, you know, we're two very different people, mm. just because we happen to be, you know, two young brunettes. It's all, it's just your height, it's just your looks, it's your demographics, and and that's all that it is. And you have to look a certain way. You know, even to play, you know, the, the homely best friend character, you have to look a certain way. And I was starting to notice that at that point in my life, I, I didn't. I didn't have that Hollywood beauty. And so... Even though I was kind of getting tired of Hollywood, it did still hurt to feel rejected. Mm. No, of course, of course it would. Because look at you. You're an absolutely beautiful woman. You're gorgeous. You look absolutely, you know, you are, though. And that's when, that's when, it, but that's when it's, it becomes really, it's just crazy, isn't it? Did you ever think about doing anything drastic, like having Thank plastic you. surgery or any of this nonsense? Did, did that ever sort of occur to you or did you not think about that? I did. You know, I had some, some black humour. I used to mention to to uh, to my my boyfriend uh, when I was in, in at New York University, I said to him, you know, sometimes I wish I could get in an accident <laughs> just so I could get cosmetic surgery guilt free. Yeah. And you know, he would tell me, well, if you want to get that for yourself, you should. But you know, you should know that I think you're beautiful, and you know, and and you should love yourself. That's mm -hmm. really what's most important. Absolutely. Uh, but I told him, I said, but it's not going to to work if I ever want to. You know, I, I don't know if I if I do. Do I want to act again? Do I not? I wasn't so sure at that point, and I felt like I had to look a certain way. And when I when I decided to stop pursuing a career in film acting or TV acting once and for all, I felt like this great weight lifted because it wasn't my job to be pretty or thin or anything for anybody. You know, it wasn't my job anymore. So I could look however I wanted. Mm -hmm. No, that makes perfect sense. I'm so glad you didn't uh, you didn't do anything drastic to yourself because you, you do look absolutely amazing. And again, I love this honesty. <laughs> Thank this, you very no, much. but this honesty in the book when you talk about the fact that you've suffered from anxiety and you know you said that you were a real perfectionist mm -hmm. because only by people like you talking about issues mm -hmm. like that does it help everyone else. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm I'm using the platform that I have. I know that I definitely mean something to a certain segment of the population. A lot of young girls grew up, you know, reading Matilda and watching Matilda. And that is, you know, so I have this responsibility, I think. Because I have this platform and people are going to listen to me, I need to use it for what I believe are, you know, good, valuable causes. And I think talking about mental health, mental illness, that's something, you know, that, that I suffered from for so many years and I still deal with. And that's definitely something that I think the rest of the world needs to work on, especially, I think, in the United States. You know, we, we, we don't have any national health care to begin with, and we certainly don't have anything for mental health. And I think that that's something that we could vastly improve on. Uh, and, and fortunately, I do start to see, you know, at least in, in the United States, I do start to see, I have started to see, you know, some changes happening there and people being more open and talking about it. And I think that is incredibly important. I agree. And it's the same thing over here. And it is people like yourself that actually helps. It's people in the public mm -hmm. eye. Because then people watch and say, oh, it's happened to them. Oh, thank you. So it can actually happen to me. And, and, and it just makes yeah. them feel better <laughs> about that. Now, the book is called Where Am I Now? Where, where are you now? Where do, how do you feel mm -hmm. about, about yourself? And you know, you know when you have to sometimes fill in a form and it says occupation, what would you put your occupation now? Would it be writer? Yeah. I usually do put writer. I usually do put writer down. Um, I still do voiceover acting, which is, which is very fun. It feels much more like theater acting to me, which theater acting is what I did through high school and uh, at New York University for a while before I, before I, I learned that, no, acting uh, wasn't really what I wanted to pursue so much. It was definitely writing. I wanted to keep writing. Uh, but yeah, I still do voiceover acting, so that's sort of a part-time thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm very happy when I'm writing. And I've written for comedy websites, and I've written for, uh, I've written plays. I'd had plays in, you know, the International Fringe Festival here in New York, and I've, uh, I've had things published 
all over the place. And uh, and I, I'm just happy writing. It doesn't really matter what it is. I studied playwriting in, but, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's something, playwriting is something I would love to do. I'd love to do TV writing. I'd, I'd love to write a graphic novel. I'd love to <laughs> write a screenplay. I'd love to write another book. It's really just... Whatever people want to read, <laughs> I will write. Mara, it's been a joy talking to you. Good luck with the book, Where Am I Now? It's out right now. Thank you so, so much for talking to us. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. If you'd like to see even more great guests, then click here. There are plenty more fantastic interviews to come, so make sure that you subscribe.